Okay, we're going to talk about uh, 6.7 today, which is Perform Similarity Transformations. Uh, largely, this is going to be a review. There might be one new topic for you, depending on where you got your Algebra 1 education from. So, we're going to jump right in. This, obviously, is clearly your notes. You should have a copy of this in front of you if you're following along. But some of the key vocabulary for this particular section is transformation, dilation, scale factor of dilation, and center of dilation, and then you're going to have stuff like reduction and enlargement. Again, this is largely a review, nothing that you should be too unfamiliar with. So a transformation is an operation that moves or changes a figure to produce a new figure. We've done translations already. Translations actually moves the figure around the Cartesian plane, but in this case, a transformation is actually going to create a new figure. Um, I've already been referring to scale factor on a on somewhat regular basis as new over old. That's going to continue to be the same, and this is where this really kicks in uh, and has a lot of relevance. Uh, dilation, again, you're already familiar with that. It's a transformation that stretches or shrinks, enlarges or reduces to create a similar figure. You're going to be doing that uh, as part of your challenge project. Uh, scale factor of a dilation is just simply the key words there as scale factor. I mean, that's what we're talking about. Uh, and again, that's the ratio of the image, okay, this is your new, to the original, so what I call old. So another way you can look at it as new over old, okay, so that's how you find scale factor. Not a big deal, uh, again, not too terribly difficult. Uh, now, I will tell you this, uh, earlier we, and I think I talked about this in class yesterday, uh, so this isn't out of the ordinary, but again, when you're dealing with similar figures, we weren't really dealing with scale factors. A lot of you are using scale factors as part of your proportions, which is fine because it all works out the same because it's proportional. But um, the thing about that was is that you guys were having a hard time determining what number goes on top, what number goes on bottom. You have to read that similar figure to see which direction it's going, and that'll help you determine what's on top and what's on bottom. Now, the one newer concept will be this um, center of dilation. Now, you've, you've seen this before, probably on your EOC test last year. Uh, when you're talking about center of dilation, it's basically saying, where are you dilating your figure from? In Algebra 1, primarily, you are taught the center of dilation is the origin. And this is where we're going to have some difference because having a center of dilation as the origin is a little bit different than having a center of dilation somewhere else. Uh, and we'll talk more about that as we get into it. So let's go ahead and jump into some examples. All right, so here we're looking at a triangle ABC. And you can see it's on a Cartesian plane. You got your ordered pairs labeled there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to dilate this triangle and transform this triangle. We're going to make it bigger, twice as big, okay? But we're going to have A as the center of dilation. Okay, so A is our center of dilation. And so what we're going to do is this. When you dilate from a point on the original figure, you basically use your slope. So let's figure out our slope here. And just a quick review of slope, if you have forgotten, you're going to go up however many, so up one, two, three, four, five, okay, so your rise is five, and then over one, two, three, so your run is three. So then your slope becomes 5 thirds as it relates to um, segment AB there. So in order to double, if I want to double this figure, so I'm going to reduce, reduce, excuse me, I'm going to enlarge by a scale factor equal to 2. Okay, so I'm going to enlarge by a scale factor equal to 2. If I'm going to do that, what I need to do is I'm basically going to do this slope one more time. So I'm going to go up 5 again, 
So one, two, three, four, five over three. One, two, three. And I'm going to put a point here. This is going to be my new B point right here, which I will call B prime. Okay? B prime just means that's your new B point. Okay? And then I'm going to extend my drawing out from the original. Okay? So I've now dilated that one particular side. And then on this one here, you can't use your, your, in this particular case here, you cannot, on A to C, you cannot use your uh, slope because the slope of a horizontal line is always zero. So you're just going to double the length. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the length of that. And so I'm going to go out seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to have my new C here. That's going to be my C prime. Okay, and then now I'm going to connect. And you see I've now dilated my triangle and made it bigger. Okay. Now, um, one of the things that you're going to notice here is that essentially when I created this new figure, that this uh, point here, BC, okay, so from BC, this particular segment right here, has become my mid-segment. Uh, it's not as easy to tell without using the distance formula that this point right here, excuse me, right there, is the midpoint. But on, on the bottom down here, the C, point C, is the midpoint of these two segments. And so essentially, when you've dilated this figure, you've created a mid-segment. Now, the reason this is different, and we actually focus on the slope in order to enlarge our figure, is because we dilated B from A. A, on this particular one, A was the center of our dilation. Okay, and that's what's different. Last year, we did not focus on this at all. So when you do the center of dilation, you're going to use the slope. And like if you're going to double the size of the figure, you're going to basically do the slope twice. Okay, or if you're going to triple, you do the slope a third time. If you're going to half it and make it smaller, you just take half of the slope and go backwards by half and so on and so forth. Now, what you did talk about last year is which I, what I want to focus on this uh, right now is taking and doing a center of dilation from the origin. So the origin, 0, 0, is our new center of dilation. And we'll see what that looks like. When you do a center of dilation from the origin, you're going to take your original ordered pairs, okay, and you're going to multiply each ordered pair by the scale factor. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take 2, and I'm going to multiply it by 2. So I'm going to go over 2 and up 2, I'm sorry, up 4 now. I'm sorry, excuse me. Let me go back. I'm going to take 2, and I'm going to multiply it by 2, and then I'm going to take my other 2 for A, and multiply it by 2. And so now I'm going to have an A prime. And so what's going to happen is, or actually, I'm not going to use A prime, B prime, C prime because I've already used B and C prime. So I'm going to make this D now. So A is becoming D. And so if I do that, my D is now going to be 4 comma 4. So my point, I'm going to go over 4, up 4. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's my new point. Oops, disregard those right there, okay? So this becomes D. I'm going to do the same thing with B, and I'm going to make BE now. So 2 times 5 is 10. 7 times 2 is 14. And so then I'm going to go over 2. I'm sorry, over 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and up 14. 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14. And here's my new B, which I'm again I'm gonna call E, right? 
okay? And then finally on my C, I multiply it by two, and I'm gonna end up off the picture here, I believe. So nine times two is 18. I'm gonna make it F. And I'll have 18 comma 4. So let me double check here. Let's see. This is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Actually, I'm good there. And then up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right in the middle of our work. No big deal. Okay. And then when I draw this line, my triangle now connecting my sides I've still made the large triangle. I've still dilated that triangle ABC to an enlargement, so it's still big. It's as big as the other one that I dilated, except now not only have I dilated it, but I've also translated it. I've moved it around. So it's transformed and translated. So anytime that you dilate from the origin, the, act, the shape will actually move. If you dilate from a point, the new points or the new shape will go away from that shape. Okay, or away from that point of dilation. So, um, if I was to dilate using a center, a C as my center of dilation. Okay, if I use C as my center of dilation, then what would happen? And I'm not going to do this real pretty, but essentially, what would happen is my shape would be dilated. But in this case, it would go in this direction here. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it and. This direction here, and then my triangle would end up over here, and that would be a C as a center of dilation. So depending on your center of dilation depends on really where the location of your triangle is. It depends on you know the size of your triangle when you're talking about the scale factor and so on and so forth. But again, all of this is pretty simple. We only have just in Algebra 1 really focused on the origin as the center of dilation. Now if you have a point as the center of dilation, you just start there and use your scale factor. If you have the origin as the center of dilation, use your scale factor and multiply all your ordered pairs by the scale factor and create your new drawing. Okay, hopefully uh, that makes sense to you. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them down and uh, come see me in tutoring. Okay, so to sign, kind of sum, sum up and, and get you on your way, a reduction is a smaller, so the scale factor is between 0 and 1. We've already talked about that this year. You talked about it. You should have already known that from last year. That's not anything new. So if, I'm, if the origin is the center of dilation, so keep in mind here what, what are my directions are here. I'm going to take my x, y coordinate, and I'm going to multiply each coordinate by 0.5. So 0.5 is obviously my scale factor here. And since it's less than 1, it's going to reduce my shape. So if I have 2, 2 times 0.5 is 1, 6 times 0.5 is 3. So I just cut those in half. Okay, And again, I'm not going through the process of solving this out because this is a review. You should already kind of know this, and I'm just trying to keep this at a minimum. Okay. Uh, and again here, uh, as I'm working with the uh, origin is at the center of dilation, okay, I'm going to enlarge this now. And again, an enlargement is greater than one. So I'm going to take each ordered pair because it's from the, the origin. I'm going to take each ordered pair and I'm going to multiply by 1.5. And so what you see here is if I start with a 4 and a 6, 4 times 1.5 is 6, 6 times 1.5 is 9. And that's really the gist of it. Again, very basic, very simple, but this should be able to get you started on your classwork and your homework uh, and then take it to the next level. If you have any questions, again, come see me uh, and that should, be do it. that should do it. And then we'll start working on the quiz on Friday and then the text, test next week. All right, you guys have a great night.